Uh, hi everybody, today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can reflect any function about an axis other than the y equals to zero line, right? You may have learned in class how to do it about the y equals to zero line. Uh, how would you do it if you wanted to reflect any function about y equals to one or y equals to minus five, right? What is the mathematical approach that you would use to reflect that function about an arbitrary axis? So what we're going to do today, we're gonna start with a simple function, a parabola, and I'm gonna illustrate the case here like the one in the figure. How would you reflect that function? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna write down a general formula that should work for any function f of x. And in the last case, we're gonna test out that approach uh, for a more complicated uh, function. So like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's get started. All right, I wanna start with a, a pretty straightforward case. We're gonna consider a simple function, in this case, a parabola. I have the function here for the parabola, and I wanna reflect it about the y equals to zero axis of symmetry, which I've denoted here by this purple dashed line. All right, we're gonna start with just one single point. This is called a vertex. Its coordinate here, if I go ahead and read it off the graph, looks like three and positive two. Okay, that's the position of that point. If I wanted to reflect it well, again, you simply measure how far that point is from the axis of symmetry. In this case, it's two units this way. And all I do is I go in the opposite direction to reflect that point. So I would place it here. Uh, the coordinate of this reflected point, well, it has the same x value. I don't change that. The only thing I do change is the y value. And I change the y value to negative y value. So how does this look like now for the general case? Well, here's the reflected function down here. Uh, let me go ahead and write it. So the reflected function, in order to get that value of the function, uh, all you have to do again is you start from y and then you simply put a negative in front of it. So for the function, it simply means that the reflected function is minus f of x. f of x is the y value. Right, so go ahead and do that for this specific parabola. We end up getting this function right here. This is x uh, minus three squared and then minus two if you carry out that multiplication of the negative in front of the function. Okay, so this is my inverted parabola function. You can see it's inverted from the leading coefficient here is a negative value. Uh, if it's negative, it means that the parabola opens facing down like this. In the first one, it was open facing up, so it had a positive one as the leading coefficient of that parabola. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward, but we're gonna use this tool now to reflect about a different axis instead of the y equals to zero. Let's go to the next page and we'll do that. All right, let's consider our same parabola that we had in the previous case, except now my axis of symmetry is y equals to one. Uh, we have the same vertex for this parabola and its coordinate is three comma two. And well, now if I wanted to reflect it about this new axis, well, again, I measure the distance. So this is a distance of one away from the axis of symmetry. So I simply reflect it. So I move down one away. Uh, the coordinate now of this reflected vertex is three comma zero. All right, if I do that for every single point, for every single f of x value, um, find the distance and then reflect it, I am going to get this green curve right here. Now the function for this green curve, I have it listed down below, and I'm gonna show you how you can actually get to this uh, following a few easy steps. All right, we're first gonna consider the y equals to one axis of symmetry. All right, the first step again, we're gonna find the distance between the red curve, which is my function, and the axis of symmetry. Okay, so what we're really evaluating here is f of x minus one, right? f of x is the red curve, and minus one, which is the axis of symmetry. So let's go ahead and do that, right? If I put f of x minus one, well, my new function, uh, the black function, it simply looks like this, right? It's x minus three squared. And if I do two minus one, I end up getting a plus one. Okay, so that is the uh, function for the black parabola right here. You can see it's kind of just shifting my original function down by one unit, right? So let's just write that down. Shift down uh, by one in this case, right? Because the axis of symmetry is one. All right, so for step two, what we wanna do now is simply take the black curve and reflect it about the y equals to zero line. All right, so we're basically taking this uh, arrow and flipping it and the y equals to zero line or axis of symmetry here is right here. All right, so in order to do that, remember we just 
did an example of how to reflect about the y equals to zero line. That's really, really straightforward, right? We start with our function, which is f of x minus one. And all we do is we put a negative sign in front of the entire thing, all right? So if I go ahead and do that, here's the f of x minus one. So for this case here, my orange curve, the equation for it would look something like this. This is x minus three squared. And again, multiplying through by minus one, we'll switch this term right here. Okay, so this is the new reflected function or this orange curve right here is given by this equation. So after reflecting about the y equals to zero axis, we were left with our orange function down here. And all we really wanna do now is again, we gotta go back to our original problem, which was to reflect it about the y equals to one. So what you have to do now is end up shifting this black arrow, for example, by up by one unit, okay? So let me just write that. So how do we shift? up uh, by one. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. You take your function and you simply add one to all the values. Okay, so if I do that, uh, just switch the color here. Um, our final equation then, if I just add one to this, I'm gonna get my final function. Let's just call it g of x and that's represented by the green curve right here, okay? So g of x is my reflected function minus x minus three squared, and I'll just drop this because I'm simply adding one to this, and these two things will simply cancel out. Okay, so this is my final function, okay? That is the green function. That is how you go about to do a reflection about any axis. In this case, we consider the y equals to one case. All right, so let's summarize. So we started with our function, which was a simple parabola, y minus three squared plus Two. That was the red curve. Uh, the next thing we did was take the difference between our red curve and our axis of symmetry. Uh, so that was the step of doing y of x minus one. Uh, this led to our black curve. So if I go ahead and do that now, y minus three squared. If I take away one uh, from this, we're gonna get plus one, right? That's the black curve. Uh, the next step we did was a reflection. Okay, so the reflection was uh, simply taking this entire function, right, our shifted function, and basically sticking a negative in front of it. Okay, and if you do that, well, let's go ahead and do that. Let's substitute this entire thing and applying a negative uh, to the front of that is pretty straightforward, minus one. Okay, so let me just go ahead and write this. This was reflected uh, about y equals to zero. Well, let's write the first one down just so we have it. This was uh, translation. Uh, translation uh, down by one. And then after, well, we, we originally started by doing this translation down by one. We have to do another translation, right? We want to shift everything back up by one. So translation up by one. Okay, and that was our green curve, so let's go ahead and write it. So again, if I just take the result from the reflection, and what I wanna do is I wanna add one to this. Okay, so we're taking this result up here, y of x, now minus one, and we're adding one, we're shifting up by one unit. So if I do that, I end up getting this result plus one, which was minus, uh, x minus three squared. Okay, this was my final result. This is how you reflect something about the y equals to one line. All right, we now do the general case. We wanna reflect about any axis y equals to a. So any horizontal line like this, it doesn't matter. We're gonna start with some function f of x. So our first step was simply to take the difference between f of x and our axis of symmetry. So in this case, it would be minus a. Okay, that was step one. This is basically shifting uh, f of x down by a units. All right, the next thing was the reflection, right? We wanted to take this whole thing from step one and basically just stick a negative in front of it. This was basically just doing a reflection about the y equals to zero line. And then our final step was we take this step up, uh, from step two. All right, let me go ahead and just write it f of x minus a. And what we want to do is we want to shift it back up by how much? In this case, we want to shift it back up by a units. Okay, so let's distribute that negative sign through. You can see that our final result is minus f of x. That's a reflection about the y equals to zero line. This negative multiplies through like this, 
gives me a plus another a. Aha, plus 2a. So this is kind of the end result. Really important. Let's go ahead and kind of box that result. This is how we're going to reflect about any axis y equals to a. So let's go ahead and try out this final equation here on a different function. All right, let's consider another case. This is how we do a general case for any function f of x. I now want to start with uh, this function over here. This is f of x equals minus 1 over 4, x plus 2 cubed, and minus 6. And I'm going to consider an axis of symmetry uh, equals to minus 2. All right, so all we have to do then is simply plug in our values inside the general expression over here. So at the end, the reflected function, right, Uh, simply, so you do negative f of x, so here's, neg here's f of x. Uh, so negative f of x will switch the sign here. We're going to get 1 fourth. It doesn't do anything to this term, plus 2 cube. Uh, negative f of x will change this to plus 6. And then I do plus 2 times a. Well, that's 2 times. Uh, this is our a value, right? a is negative 2 for this case. All right, uh, this guy gives me... A negative 4, when I put this together with the 6, I am simply going to get plus 2. So at the end, my reflected function is 1 fourth, uh, x plus 2 cubed, and plus 2. Okay, here's the reflected function. Let's go ahead and plot our original function and our final reflected function. See if this works. All right, so here's the axis of symmetry, y equals to minus 2, represented by that blue dash line. Uh, my red curve is my starting polynomial. In this case, it's a cubic polynomial. Um, all right, here's our function that we said we were going to try. And now the last step here is minus f of x, that was our equation, plus 2 times a. And a is minus 2. Let me go ahead and add that graph to the layer. And there it is, the green line. If you now measure, for example, this inflection point to the axis of symmetry, right, you could see that that looks perfectly symmetric, right, for this case. All right, every box here is one unit. Uh, so you can see we're one, two, uh, three, four units away and four units away down here. You could see that at the intersection right here, at the axis of symmetry, there is a perfect reflection. And the rest of the curve works perfectly. Okay, so there you have it, folks. That's how you do a general case. All right, it also works with uh, any shape. Here's a right angle triangle, uh, ABC triangle. This is our general formula. Again, this is nothing more than just the Y coordinate, right? So, and we're considering the axis of symmetry of minus two. So this would be m minus the Y coordinate of any point. And again, if I put the minus two there, I'm simply gonna get minus four. So let's go ahead and calculate the position of, or the new coordinates of these, the reflected right angle triangle. Uh, first of all, the x values do not change, so that's simply 1. And how about the y value? So you're going to get, you plug in the 2 here, uh, you're going to get minus 2 minus 4 gives me minus 6. How about for b? b we started with 7 up here, so you get uh, minus 7 minus 4 gives me uh, negative 11, and the x-coordinate doesn't change, so that would be minus 4. And the last one, again, x-coordinate doesn't change. You substitute the 2 inside our general equation. Uh, you also get minus 6. So let's go ahead and draw that triangle. So 1 minus 6 uh, looks like this. Uh, 1 and negative 6 is here. Uh, what else? And negative 4, negative 11. Uh, negative 4 is here, and negative 11 is all the way down here. Okay. And the last one, negative 4, negative 6. So uh, negative 4 and negative 6 is here. All right, now we can see if I can just finish off that triangle, just sketch it here, try to make a straight line. Now, if you count, we're how many units away from this axis of symmetry? It looks like we're four units away from the axis of symmetry. And here we're also four units away from the axis of symmetry. So that looks really good. Okay, so our general equation here works not only for functions, but you can also use it for any point um, in the xy plane. No problems there.